Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 13th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Stockheim, Germany. File integrity management is always a hot topic and of course important for security to make sure if files got changed and why they got changed. Now the first part, the if is actually not that hard usually and Xavier has another trick here to do this using backup files given that backups are usually pretty good in identifying files that changed in order to create incremental backups. He mentions rsync as a tool to do that with. rsync actually can use uh, things like checksums to compare files so it doesn't just rely on the file date for example or the size of the file. So uh, this is in my opinion actually the easy part of file integrity management. The hard part is then to always go through these reports and and figure out which files are supposed to change. For example, libraries may be updated uh, by automatic update processes. Change control really has to tie into this as well. Otherwise, you will very quickly get overwhelmed by these reports. Ethereum is a new and up and coming cryptocurrency that in many ways even surpasses the mind share of Bitcoin at this point. It's not quite as big yet, but has been rising very steadily until recently. So no big surprise that criminals are turning from Bitcoin to Ethereum to find new victims. In particular, a wallet service called MyEtherWallet appears to be a target here of these scams. Now, these scams don't really use traditional phishing via email. Instead, they're using new media like Slack and Reddit in order to impersonate official MyEtherWallet chatbots. Over the last six days, it appears that uh, these attacks uh, did steal around $700,000 worth of crypto coins uh, from various users. Now, this attack is not a breach in my Ether wallet. It's just that uh, these attackers are impersonating these my Ether wallet chatbots, which then, of course, makes them sort of tend to gravitate to this particular wallet service. With any cryptocurrency, you should keep your currency in offline wallets whenever possible. Of course, if you're actively trading, then this may not necessarily be the best and most convenient option for you. It's also important to select a wallet service that does support two-factor authentication. Now, many of these services do support it, but it's often optional. So make sure you enable two-factor authentication. In the end, uh, many people have in these cryptocurrency wallets more money than in their bank account. So you probably should pay at least the same attention to these wallets as you do to your bank account. And no, SQL databases are always an interest of mine. Actually, I'm expecting to give a talk about some of the issues with NoSQL database security at the OASP conference in September. A well-written blog post is illustrating an actual reasonably old but still not fixed issue with MongoDB. When you install MongoDB on a server, it actually makes all its files world readable. With this, any user on the server is able to make a complete copy of your database. Now, the blog points out that this is, of course, a huge issue for shared servers. Now, I would never recommend running any kind of security sensitive uh, web application on a shared server that you share with dozens or hundreds of other people that you don't know. On the other hand, this can also be a big problem with any kind of web application vulnerability that provides file read access to the attack 
attacker because now also the web server has full read access to these files without any kind of username and password permission scheme that you set up for MongoDB itself. Given that a ticket for this issue has been filed actually a couple years ago, if I got this correctly, I don't think uh, there is a fix coming up anytime soon. Uh, one nice recommendation from the blog post is to run MongoDB in a Docker container. This may help somewhat isolate it from other processes and of course other users on the same system. And if you're already done with your patch Tuesday patching, well, uh, there is one more for you here. Core Security published an advisory with multiple vulnerabilities in Trend Micro's Deep Discovery Director. This tool can be used to centrally deploy and update products, so more of a large company enterprise product, but if you run it, make sure you update it. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.